All right, guys. So I'm going away for my second festival in two weekends uh, tomorrow. Um, yeah, so that should be fun. This one's called Moving Festival. It's a very small uh, festival near Manchester, I believe, and uh, really small. Like the, there's basically one stage, and it's in a barn. Uh, but it's actually got uh, some cool acts there this year. Groove Armada are going to be there. Uh, Stereo MCs. Uh, what was the one name that I keep forgetting? Not Soul to Soul, some kind of old hip hop group. Oh god, I'm forgetting the name. Anyway, it'll be cool. So that's that. So anyway, so Shenmue's been out for a few days now, and uh, you know people are generally happy. There has been some bugs noticed. Uh, D3T are you know actively asking the community to send them any information about bugs so they can keep working on it and keep patching it. So it's not over yet, guys. If you found any bugs. In the Shenmue re-releases then yeah I'll put a link in the low bar D3T are on um, Twitter of course uh, you can get in touch with them various different ways but uh, yeah they are still working on it they're still gonna be patching people have noticed a few audio bugs here and there and um, personally I've only seen like literally one or two very small audio bugs and um, some people have reported other issues like with the lighting it being too dark things like that um, but yeah, you know, it's not perfect. It hasn't come out completely perfect. Um, but this was a game that was never going to happen. It was never going to be released. You know, we have to kind of remi remind ourselves how this came to pass. Now, I'm not saying we just lap up any old shite. What I'm saying is, let's remember how we got here. You know, uh, this was a game that was abandoned for over a decade. Uh, you know, the original company that put it out did not have any interest in putting any more money down on this game that already lost them millions was a huge albatross around their neck, contributed to the uh, demise of the Dreamcast indirectly. I'm not saying it was Shenmue's fault, but you know, it's part of that whole story. Um, so, Shem, so Sega were, you know, maybe bitten and a bit shy. They did pass on the, uh, the development uh, or the, the conversion job for this game to uh, an outside um, developer, D3T, and you know, it's it, it is what it is. They're still working on it. They're still patching on it. Like I said, personally, I haven't seen a hell of a lot of, um, what is that line? What is that line? There's a weird line on the video. Um, I don't know what that is. What is that line? That's weird. That's distracting me now. Yeah, so, anyway. Yeah, if you've seen any bugs, report them and you'll be fine, you know. So that's that. I don't know what else is to be said about that, really. I've, I've been enjoying it, you know, the improvements that they've made certainly, uh, you know, make it feel really nice to play on a modern console. Um, the higher resolution, all the rest of it. Yeah, I'm happy with it. What can I say? I haven't seen many, many bugs. Um, but that's it. So I tried something a little bit different on the channel uh, the other day. I did a, a Shemu ASMR video. If you're not um, familiar with what that is, that's a... Uh, Auto Meridian Sensory Response, I believe. Uh, it's basically a, a kind of medical, almost, condition thing that occurs that some people can have happen to them, which is basically where you feel really relaxed when you feel when you hear relaxing noises. And um, it's weird, you know, I always used to get this feeling of relaxation from certain voices and certain noises, certain things, when I was younger. But I didn't know what it was. I had a, a maths teacher that used to just really put me to sleep just with the tone of how he spoke this really monotone, low tone voice and um, and uh, hang on, a bus is just letting me through some precarious driving going on here I don't know why he's letting me go there alright, fair enough anyway, so when I was younger yeah, I always remember having this kind of uh, reaction that just made me really, really relaxed to a teacher's voice and then years later um, I used to watch uh, quantum physics lectures just to help me get to sleep. I found it really relaxing. I just used to listen to these, yeah, quantum physics lectures that I had absolutely no idea what they were talking about. But just the way that the guy was speaking and the kind of almost the, the very fact that it was boring uh, and, and the guy's tone of voice just made me really relax and just really helped me get to sleep if I ever had trouble sleeping, which I don't really, but it just was really relaxing basically. So anyway, then years after that, I kind of heard about this ASMR thing, and it's it's huge on YouTube. I mean, go and have a look. It's uh, it's huge. There's a lot of really popular ASMR channels dedicated to this stuff. Uh, so it's a bit weird if you've not come across it before. It might seem a bit strange. Why would I 
purposefully whisper whilst doing a video. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, the purpose wasn't for the information in the video. The purpose was for if you know if you if you if you do use ASMR videos, then this can help you kind of feel relaxed. Um, but only four down thumbs so far on that video. Only four. I'm surprised. Um, it's funny. Um, I always find it funny when people down thumb videos on YouTube that aren't the kind of thing they want to watch. You know, if the video is clearly titled, then down thumbing a video that you're not interested in after having clicked on it when you're not interested is like going shopping for shoes in an electronics store. You know, walking into the shop and declaring, there's no shoes in here, this is rubbish, and then walking out. That's what it's like. You know, if a video is clearly titled, you know, um, hula hoopers, extravaganza and you're not interested in hula hoops then don't click on a fucking hula hoop video you know what I'm saying anyway so that it's a bit different if you're into it cool if you're not that's fine you know walk on by wait till the next vid but that won't be for a little while because like I said I'm away this weekend so I just wanted to put this out there just to say hello hello guys hope everyone's enjoying Shenmue um, I really have been obviously I've played through the game several times before but playing through it again it's reminded me again of various reasons of why I really love this game and why it's so unique and why it's so special you know the way that you build the narrative the way that you feel um, part of the world that you're in by talking to all the NPCs finding those little pieces of information carrying on your investigation you know communication is so important in Shenmue uh, that communication with the NPCs and them each having specific things to say related to your um, position to, related to what you're you know doing at that point moment in the game you know it's all context sensitive you might have you know NPCs that don't give you any information but they will always have something relevant to say based on where you are in the game so even if that's even if that's just to say you know I'm not interested go away um, all the NPCs will have different uh, speech relating to you know what's going on and that level of detail to the interaction with NPCs is still not matched by many modern games you know, you still have a lot of modern games where vast majority of the NPCs are just you know, characters walking around with nothing to do or say, you know, not part of the story, you can't interact with them. You know, GTA, you can beat people up, but you can't stop on the street and have conversations with them, as far as I'm aware. Uh, maybe you can nowadays, I don't know what's uh, changed with GTA, I haven't played it for a while, but yeah, anyway, point being, Shenmue does things that still aren't matched by a lot of modern games. Uh, so yeah, the deep interaction with the NPCs, that time cycle that I've talked about before, of course, is, is absolutely crucial to the feeling that Shenmue gives you of being in this uh, alive world, you know. You have to take into account the fourth dimension. You don't have to do that very often on video games, still. You don't often have to take into account the fourth dimension, time, you know. Um, you, you need to meet somewhere, you need to, you need to meet somebody somewhere, but you also need to meet them somewhen, you know, that kind of thing. So that extra dimension of having to be aware of the time of day, you know, <laughs> Ine-san uh, bollocking you for coming home too late, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, there's lots of little, there's lots, of, the whole game is tied up with this idea of the, of the day-night cycle and, uh, you know, the time being, you know, t shops not opening until certain times, uh, meeting people, that kind of thing. It has that extra level, that extra layer of reality to, to build in the game world. You know, they've thought about the time aspect of it far more than most of the games did and still don't, uh, you know, to that degree. So, yeah, that's not, that didn't, I already spoke about that recently, that's not something that is reminding me on this recent playthrough. But um, just the character of the game, just the, just the, the you know, I, I mean, yeah, I know this is partially nostalgia speaking, but I do actually quite like that hammy delivery, that kind of, um, yeah, that kind of almost cheesy kind of, the, 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 um, um, I don't use the word bad, but bad voice acting. I, I like it. It's part of the character of the game. But again, that might be nostalgia. I don't know. I'm really um, intrigued to hear new Shenmue players' opinions of this game now that you've played it for the first time. I'm really intrigued. So, guys, video responses are absolutely welcome, but leave a message in the comments as well. A message a comment leave a comment in the comments section that's what it's for 
driving, speaking, multitasking, difficult. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm especially uh, interested in finding out what new players think of this game. So tell me what you think, tell me what you've been enjoying about it, what you don't enjoy maybe, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, how are you feeling? How does it compare to your expectations? You know, because um, obviously it's not going to blow people away in the same way that it did in 1999. It was a technical marvel back then. But I still believe that even though technically it's not, you know, graphically, you know, it's not as impressive as it was, I still believe the structure of the game and the flavour of the game and the way that it tries to be, you know, mature, philosophical, um, a bit more mature, uh, grown up, that kind of thing, I still think those aspects will be unique enough that new players will think, yeah, this is something special and can see why people fell in love with it all those years ago. Um, so guys, yeah, let me know, especially new players, how are you getting on with it? And again, guys, if you've noticed any bugs, you know, drop D3T a line. They are still working on it. They're certainly going to have enough uh, budget to carry on working on this game because they are, um, they are, uh, you know, it's been selling quite well. We, I don't think we've got the sales figures yet. Of course, it's not been out for a whole week yet. Um, I don't know when we'll get the first sale figures, but that will be really interesting. I'm certainly quite intrigued to find out what uh, the sales figures are going to be for the first week of this game being out there. And um, yeah, and the reviews, the reviews have been positive so far. Um, in fact, yeah, really positive. Digital Foundry, some of the big sites have done really positive reviews on it. And uh, so that's good to see. Um, yeah, just more, there's a lot of Shamu love out there, man, at the minute. But like I said, yeah, D3T is still working on it. So if you do find any bugs, and I know there are some, uh, some audio glitches and a few things here and there. Personally, like I said, I've only, ever, I've only seen a couple of small audio bugs since the patch was dropped um, but other people have found more so yeah just get in touch with them and hopefully they'll keep working on it and it won't be too long before that game is completely patched and completed and, un and bug free well I say bug free you've got to remember there were some bugs in the original Dreamcast version so maybe those bugs might not be able to be removed so you know let's be realistic about that but um, that's it that's it I'm just happy it happened man I'm just really happy it happened because this wasn't going to happen. We had to bang on Sega's door for so long to get this to happen, and it finally did. So, yeah, I'm very happy about that. Um, but at the same time, yeah, we do need to report any issues and help them to make it be the best version of Shenmue that it can possibly be. Speaking of which, that Japanese limited edition version of the game that's coming out in November is suddenly a more, uh, you know, um, a, a better prospect. I think I might actually go for that Japanese collector's edition now because there is a chance that that will be the most complete version of Shenmue collection on a disc because that's not coming out till November, so you're assuming they haven't printed the discs yet. So hopefully, there doesn't seem to be any reason why not, they will put the complete version with the patches onto that disc. Fingers crossed that's what they'll do. I've already pre-ordered it, so we'll see what happens when that comes. But uh, that's it, guys. All right, uh, D3T in the, in the low bar if you've got any bugs, and definitely give me some video responses, ideally, but certainly comments about first-time players' impressions of this game and how you're getting on with it. All right, guys, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.